Hello friends! <laughs> Let me start this video with a big fat apology. You see, this is gonna be my installment in the collaboration which is named Sisterhood of the Traveling Pattern and I am late. Extremely late and I am so sorry. Sorry Annabelle and sorry to everyone who participated in the collaboration. I should have done this literally a year ago. Okay, the reason. I may have mentioned a couple of times in the past that I have ADHD and one of the things that plagues you when you have ADHD is that when you're not interested in something, it is very difficult to get yourself in the flow, to get yourself in the zone. Because when you are interested in something, you have a literal, well, almost superpower at your disposal. You can learn stuff in really, really short time. You can get massive amount of stuff done. But if you're not in that zone, just forget it. You're not gonna get anything done. And that's the whole thing about ADHD, where people think you're lazy or, you know, you just need to apply yourself. Anyway, I fell out of love with vintage sewing. And I applied for this collaboration when I was still very much into vintage sewing. And then I just sort of lost the sojo, as they say. And I still have not recovered my vintage sewing sojo, but I'm gonna do it anyway because a couple of things have finally clicked into place, which is one, fabric. It is September right now, so fall is coming up. <laughs> fall is my season, really, I love fall. Uh, and I want to make a fall dress out of this fabric. I love it, it's probably an old tablecloth or something, but anyway, I love it. And I'm, I've got enough of it to make the sisterhood of the traveling patterns dress. I also have really cute buttons which I at the moment have misplaced but I will find them. The second thing that clicked into place is I need to adjust the pattern. I need to make it a little less 60s. I'm sorry it's supposed to be a 60s pattern but yeah as I said I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna switch it around a little bit so that it appeals to me and I can finally get around to making it. So what I'm gonna do is make a button closure down the front. I don't really have a very much buttons, but the ones that I did get were so stinking cute and they matched the fabric perfectly. They're like little tiny light brown buttons. They look like they're made out of wood, but they're not. And they just go perfectly with this dress, so I want them. I don't really have enough, so my plan was to make a v-neck, so as to save up on the buttons that would go here, and then to make it the buttons not go all the way down, but sort of just above the knee down, if that makes sense, maybe even a little bit higher, I don't know, I'm gonna be wearing tights anyway. So without much further ado, let's get started. Okay, I shall attempt to make sense of whatever it is I'm doing, I'm probably doing it wrong, I'm probably taking the long route here, I don't care so much. Uh, progress, any progress is better than no progress, so I'll take slow progress over, you know, doing things efficiently <laughs> the first time around. Anyway, um, it has boob darts, and I'm trying to figure those out by elimination, by process of elimination, uh, essentially. I have pinned up the bottom and I've sewed up the top a little bit, and I have made a mark where I think it begins on both sides, and then sort of just matched up the fabric to the other side until I get to the point where I have excess fabric left. I folded that and that's now the beginning of the dart. And now I'm going to figure out where it leads to. <laughs> but first I'm gonna measure everything out, all the darts that I made, pin them into place and sew them. Although I might actually, I don't know. Because of this, this sort of stripey fabric, uh, it's, it's light and it's stripey and it's completely different from the fabric that I'm gonna end up with. And I don't know how it's gonna look. That's, I mean, this looks horrendous, but then again, it's awful white stripey instead of luscious dark green. So anyway, I'm just gonna continue blundering on until I, until this fits, until this uh, sort of kind of fits. Okay. I am satisfied. I've tinkered with it on and on and on until it fit. There is one dart here, one dart here, there's one really long dart here and a slightly less longer dart to the side of it. And I'm pretty content with the fit right now. Wish me luck. Thank you. 
update. Cut out the bodice pieces and the lining as well because I plan to line it so that the armholes and the neckline will have a nice finish. Been seeing how I've been speculating with the buttons on the spacing of the buttons and this is where I got so that's just sort of wasn't I was just curious it was it wasn't really necessary to do it but anyway furthermore I have cut out the skirt and as you will see I have added substantial volume to the skirt because I thought it was a little bit too long and narrow and I didn't like that at all so I guess the whole 60s silhouette isn't really going to happen with this. But as far as I'm concerned, that's of secondary concern. Because first and foremost, I want a dress that I know I will love and wear. So sue me. Oh yeah, and I have cut a piece of the bottom. Just in case I want to make a... Um, gosh, what's the word? <laughs> I don't really know what the word is but you know it's this sort of extra very long very narrow rectangle for buttons ah oh, what's the name educate me in the comments this is actually the lining not another mock-up but i found that there is way too much fabric in the front i mean if you're gonna cross it over to make the buttons and the buttonholes it's still gonna be way too much it's gonna be way too roomy so I have marked the line I've pinned it down to according to my body shape and I've marked the line here I'm going to cut this off and then lay these strips on top of the, um, the outer fabric so that the exact same amount of fabric will have been removed from both lining and outer fabric and I think that that will be enough because I still have a little bit of space extra space so I think that that will be enough to make the you know the, the crossover <laughs> what do you call it so that it will um, facilitate accommodate the row of buttons and buttonholes so I appear to have made a tiny mistake what I think happened, no, what I'm sure happened, is that I, in classic ADHD fashion, just went on ahead without thinking, without considering, is this piece of fabric in the right position? It was not. It was one quarter um, tilted. It was tilted. And now I have sewn the underside to the side, if that makes sense. But I have decided that I cannot be bothered to rip it up and start over again because I already felt like the, the length was going to be pretty long. So uh, at the end, I'm just going to cut that and then continue. I feel the universe is pointing me in a certain direction because, <laughs> look, 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 look. I dislike this. The neckline should be lower. I don't know why I didn't notice this before. <laughs> but here's the thing. I made one buttonhole too many. This is where the buttons end. I, I made a superfluous buttonhole and I think that my brain was preparing me for something. Namely, this sucks. I have to get rid of some of the fabric here, and, but then this little button can go where, the, where this buttonhole is and, you know, sort of vacant. And yeah. So it, I guess it kind of works out. The one thing that I am irritated by is the fact that I will now have to use bias tape because I'm not gonna 
cut this and then fold it inwards and then because that's that's just gonna be horrible that's gonna be messy and sloppy and awful i know it is gonna be so i'm just gonna draw out the line mark out the line on the fabric of the new neckline uh, cut it a little bit higher and then go around it with bias tape it's not gonna be a very pretty finish but it's gonna be functional i'm sure so let's get going so I thought it was going to be messy. I mean, the new neckline, I thought it was going to be messy and horrible, but it isn't. Look. And actually, it looks pretty decent. And I really like it. Okay, so this is maybe not ideal, but still. It came out pretty well. So, yeah. and green. I love my new pinafore. So yeah, I guess the lesson here is if I gotta do something that I didn't don't really want to do, I gotta find some way to make it work for me. Such a simple thought. One might even think that such a simple thought could have occurred to me a lot sooner, but oh well, such is life. Thank you for watching my video. If you made it this far, comment pinafores for life in the comments so I can see who made it to the end. And if you want to support me, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, share it with your friends who might be interested. And if you want, you can buy me a coffee on Ko-Fi, which is also much appreciated. Thank you. See you in the next one. Bye.